Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing something a bit out of the box today, something that I don't usually do and that is talking about a movie that is based on a novel that I've read or by a author that I'm a massive fan of. As you can probably tell by the thumbnail, I am referring to Firestarter by Stephen King. If you weren't aware, I am a fan of Stephen King. I used to read all of his work on a regular basis, but now I just tend to tip my toes into his work from time to time. But I want to try to read more of his work like I used to. So before I go any further, I just want to say that yes, I am a booktuber. I'm not a channel that reviews and talks about movies or TV shows. So think about this from the perspective of someone that's actually read the book and knows the material fairly well. Also, if you enjoyed this movie or if you had conflicting or negative or positive responses about this movie and or novel that are different from mine, that is okay, that is perfectly fine. We are all entitled to have our own opinions, but just remember that, th that this is just my own thoughts coming forward. Plus, I might actually forget certain aspects of the book, so keep that in mind as well. And of course, this is going to be a spoiler-free video. I'm not going to spoil anything about the movie or the book whatsoever, so that's that. So a little bit about what Firestarter, the novel, is about. It focuses around a father who is protecting his little girl who has abilities to start fires with her mind. This resulted in her parents, as they were students, I believe, they volunteered themselves to go through some experiments where they were injected with this serum. Well, them and a small group of people. And they weren't sure about what this um, liquid was. They, did, was. they were just getting paid for it and that's all they really cared about. And this resulted in these two individuals getting supernatural powers and abilities and they fell in love and they had a child when the child grew up and was growing up it turned out that the infant had also special powers and abilities that were passed on from the mother and the father and this story focuses mostly around the father trying to keep his daughter safe from this group of individuals. It's kind of like a secret agency, kind of like a men in black type of thing, where these groups of individuals are trying to get this girl to try to harness her powers and abilities to basically keep her as a weapon. They want to train her, they want to observe her, they want to do all these experiments on her so they can use her whenever they please. And throughout the book, it's just a matter of these two individuals overcoming this obstacle and trying to live a normal life. They're not hurting anyone. They're not causing any harm to anyone. They're, they aren't a nuisance towards society. They are just trying to survive, but they can't because they are absolutely harassed by this group of individuals that basically want to take the girl and yes the father to some degree and do all these experiments with them so as i said this is based on the novel by stephen king of the same name and the novel was published on the 29th of september 1980 i have read the novel it's been a while since i've read it but it was a good story i really liked it it's kind of like a superhero story you know with this group of individuals have these powers and yeah it's it's not really horror it's more of a sci-fi novel with a horror twist to it and there is an original movie based on this novel that was released in 1984 and it stars Drew Barrymore as the leading lady Charlie McGee and the movie, the original movie, as far as I can remember, followed the novel pretty much exact. There wasn't much that differentiated between the novel and the original movie. I'm sure there must be something that is minute that they didn't 
and that was in the novel but as far as I can tell there wasn't much so when there was an announcement that they were doing a remake or a reboot or whatever of Firestarter I was intrigued a little bit excited but I was thinking to myself well the move well the original movie was so exact to the book then how could they or why or why are they just rebooting the movie and doing it again so in a way i was thinking well i hope they're not going to do the same thing uh, over again where they follow the book book exactly and in a way they did and in a way they didn't but i'll go through that in a minute this movie didn't get that much uh publicity i uh, didn't see advertised anywhere i only heard about it because i work at a cinema I heard about it because I saw the poster of it at work. I didn't see any trailers for it online or before the movies or in the foyer area where the concession stands are. I didn't see any advertisements for this movie whatsoever. So whoever was doing that side of the business didn't really do a good job. And plus this movie came out on the second weekend of Doctor Strange so it kind of had that wall to overcome please let me know how the movie did in your country but over here in the UK it kind of bombed well not kind of it did bomb um, not a lot of people are watching it I don't know if it's because they don't know that it's Stephen King or they think it's a horror movie I mean I just want to say again guys that Firestarter is not a horror movie but I saw this probably about a week ago and in the room that I was in there were probably about, including myself, about six, maybe seven people. So this is rated 15 in the UK. If you're over in America or Canada and you have no idea what, the, what that rating means, basically it's that everyone that watches it has to be 15 and over. The runtime of it was 1 hour and 34 minutes long. It was directed by someone called Keith Thomas. And I did do a very brief look on his IMDb page. He looks like he hasn't directed many films. That this is the most mainstream movie he's actually done so far. This movie overall wasn't the best. It took what was in the novel and the original movie and it added to the mix. It added to the story about how this little girl, Charlie McGee, who is played, I must say, fantastically by Rayan Kira Armstrong, hopefully I've said her name right. She basically carries this movie. I know that in movies nowadays or TV shows that the small child character can be very irritating or their acting style isn't that great. But she basically carried this movie. She wasn't perfect, but she gave her all to this role. She couldn't have done any more, even if she tried. So when I say that they added to Charlie's character, I mean that she's in school and how she's getting on with her classes and how the teachers are interacting with her and we also see that there are these group of individuals that are bullying that are bullying her there's this one specific individual this small boy that's the ringleader and he's always calling her a freak and picking on her and charlie thinks that okay she must be a freak and she knows about her powers and she tries to hide in within herself she's not really of a social person and at home we find that her dad who is called Andy McGee is played by Zac Efron now he is okay in this story I must be honest he is okay his acting in this was kind of honed in he gave me the impression that he only did it for a paycheck but he was good he wasn't the best or, or he, I mean he was a little bit rough a uh, rough around the edges but I believed the chemistry between Charlie and Andy. Not as much as the original, but there was that relationship there. And it was nice to see Zac Efron doing something that wasn't either singing songs in a classroom or 
doing a throwaway summer comedy movie. And the mother, who is called Vicky McGee, who is played by Sidney Lemon. Now, in the novel and the original movie, Vicky, or Charlie's mother, is mentioned only in flashbacks. We find out that in the original book and the movie, as far as I can remember, that Charlie killed her mother in a accident. And we found out about her character through flashbacks and we found out about how when Andy and Vicky were lying in this room on these beds getting all this serum into their veins and that was a really nice thing to see in, in, in the original movie because it had like scenes from that um, environment that you basically knew what was happening you you kind of like put two and two together and found, oh, okay, cool. They actually got all this stuff injected to them. They had powers and this is why Charlie's got powers. But in the reboot or in the remake, that scene was only in the opening credits of the movie. And it was kind of like a montage type of, you know, footage where it was all filmed and grainy and all that type of stuff. So if you came into the movie early, missing about the first five minutes, then then um, you would totally miss that. There was a scene in, I think, a hospital room where the doctor, who is all old and insane, is talking about it. If you miss the opening credits, then you won't really understand what that was all about. In the remake, Vicky gets attacked by Charlie, which is an accident. She sets Vicky's arms on fire, and obviously she gets burnt. And I think that Vicky must die in this movie. I'm not sure what happened to her, I can't remember. But she must have been killed in some accident. And as I said, the organisation which is trying to get hold of Charlie and Andy, which is called The Shop. Now, if you aren't paying attention to the this um, remake, you won't actually know what this organisation is actually called because it's mentioned the shop about three times or so. But that's what the organisation is actually called. It's called the shop. And they aren't that different from the novel and the original movie. They're just these relentless agents that are trying to get hold of Andy and Charlie. But they are led by this woman who is... I suppose the boss, she's very determined about what she wants to do and she's very crazy and very narrow-minded and she's got a tunnel vision so right, I want to get Charlie, I don't care what happens, I don't care who I have to kill, I'm going to get this individual and experiment on her. And I also want to clarify that she doesn't intend to do Charlie any harm or anything like that, she just wants to make her as a weapon. And there's this individual that is called Rainbird, who is a agent of the shop. And he is played in this by someone called Michael Grey Eyes. Now, in the book and the original movie, Rainbird was in the organisation of the shop. He wasn't excluded from it or an, or an exile from it. He was an employee working there. And when Charlie and Andy were apprehended and brought to the shop for experiments, because they were separated, Rainbird tried to go to Charlie and pretend to be a janitor and try to befriend her and get her guard down. He also wanted to secretly betray her and kill her. I think that his mentality was that if he killed her, then he would inherit her powers and her powers would become his. As I said, it's been a while since I've read the novel. Rainbird, he is an assassin character who is working with the shop, but is on his own. And he's hunting down Charlie and Andy. He's an okay character. He's kind of a character which every time he's coming on the screen, you don't know who exactly he is or what exactly his motivations are. There is this... I wouldn't say subplot, but there is this moment in this movie where he, I think he mentions the fact that he thinks that Charlie is his daughter or he's 
wants to try to convince her that he is Charlie's bi biological father, which, as far as I can remember, was never a thing in the book or the original movie. And it was a really, really weird thing to have in that film. It really was. I mean, he is an okay actor, but, yeah. It was just a missed opportunity, it really was. And the same with Vicky. Her character should have been in flashbacks only, but I can understand why they chose to expand on her character and do something different with her. This movie was shot really well, and um, everyone, I think, including the characters I didn't really think that did too well, did their best, I suppose. The ending was... Okay, it was un anticlimactic, I must say that. And also, I forgot to mention that Andy's powers, he can look at someone and tell them what to do, and they have to do it. It's kind of like a form of hip of an hypnosis. And Vicky's powers are, as far as I can re remember, she can read people and read their emotions and read their minds. But in the original novel and the original movie Charlie only had the power of creating fires that's her power that's what she could actually do but in this movie she can not just make fires she can she's actually inherited her parents powers so she can look at someone and tell them what to do she can read minds but that was fine but they should have just stuck with her just making fires and that was just just it she didn't have to have all these other powers which was a bit confusing to watch, it really was. So do I re recommend this? I mean, to be honest guys, I'm probably not gonna watch this movie ever again. I'm not gonna buy it on Blu-ray. If it happens to be on Netflix and I have nothing better to do, then I'll, yeah, yeah sure, I'll actually give it a watch, but I'm in no rush to actually watch this movie again. But, I mean, I would recommend that you read the book and at least watch the original movie. But if you're wondering about whether you should watch this movie, give it a try. It's not going to blow your mind. It's not going to be the most epic thing that you've watched in 2022. It's, I mean, if it is, that's great. If it's your best movie that you've seen this year, that is great. But don't go in it with really high expectations. So that's it, guys. That is my little video. Or, or probably not little. But that is my video on Firestarter 2022. Let me know if you've seen it. Let me know what your thoughts are on about it. And with all that out of the way, have a great day. Read some awesome books and I will see you all in my next video.